So lesson 23, voltage dividers. We will learn how voltage dividers work and how they can be used in circuits. This is our last topic on circuits and electronics, and I'm talking about it, um, I guess not the rule, sorry. Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, <laughs> all right, there we go, we're back, all right. So as I sort of said to you guys last time, we, um, I could have spent, I wanted to do extend out the course by one extra week. And that last week is going to be on voltage dividers. And I'm originally, I was a bit hesitant to doing it, but I think it might be actually good because it will give me a chance to talk to you guys about a concept that will be useful in the next coming weeks when we start to do electronics, things with electronics and the robotics project, if that works. As I said, I'm not necessarily saying it's going to happen. I'm not going to say it's going to work. I'm just sort of saying if it does, it should help us with it. So before we talk about voltage dividers, last week we were focusing on energy. We talked about that ultimately why electrons move. We said that electrons move around a circuit because they want to balance a charge or get away from charge. We talked about how you can charge a balloon up by you know adding electrons to it and we said that you can even create electricity by running a coil in a magnetic field or by using the fact that electrons want to get to a fluorine to make a battery voltage these are different ways that you can make electricity then i talked about well what is power how is the voltage times the current the amount of any voltage is the amount of energy per uh, per an electron, whereas current is almost like the amount of electrons per second. So what you're sort of saying is, well, how much energy am I getting every second? That's what power is, is the amount of energy every second. Uh, speaking of energy, energy is measured in joules, or we can also measure energy in kilowatt hours. Remember, kilowatt hours are just another unit, just like our Big Macs are another unit of energy, and calories are another unit of energy. All you have to do is multiply the amount of power, which is the amount of energy per second, times by the net amount of seconds. Or if you're doing kilowatt hours, the amount of kilowatts, and multiply by hours. Now, um, so what else can I talk to you about? We then did some examples, and then I, we talked briefly about efficiency, which is useful energy over total energy. And then I put you to work on two things. One, creating the circuits, which are six people still haven't finished those circuit questions. And the second one was working on electronics four. So now we're going to talk about, yeah, and then this is the general plan leading up to it. So therefore today we're in week six. That puts us here. Here's the test next week, next Tuesday. So that means revision stuff happens here. And then we're going to jump into next week doing this. And then we're going to do some stuff about the electronics project and basic modeling, maybe some coding. We'll get to that. Um, so let's start with what is a voltage divider and how do they work? Okay, so voltage dividers are ways of setting up circuits to ensure only a set amount of voltage is transferred. This is important when using sensitive electronic devices. So for example, you may have a torch which has a, um, you may have a torch which has a particular voltage that you want to go through. You might say, or you might have a, let's, let's use something a bit different. You may, let's say your laptop. Your laptop's got a battery. Now a huge amount of voltage needs to go of that battery, needs to go to your CPU, and it needs to go, which is the brains of the computer, and the screen, which is gonna keep that computer light turned on. But you don't want like, if it's, you've got a 19 volt battery in your laptop, you don't want all of that 19 volts going to something sensitive like, I don't know, 
your um, we'll co we'll go with the RAM in your computer, or you don't want all that 19 volts going to your um, camera because it might blow up the camera. So you want to use something like a voltage divider. And what it will do is it takes a voltage. Let's say you take 12 volts and you can shrink it down to eight volts. Let's go have a look at how this voltage divider is actually doing that. How does it take 12 volts and shrink it to eight volts? And what does this voltage divider look like? Firstly, the voltage divider has usually two resistors, sometimes three, and it will all it will have two lines. And these lines are going up and out of the circuit. You might say, well, that's an incomplete circuit, therefore it's not going to work. I would normally say yes, I agree with you, but in these pictures with these particular voltage dividers, you assume these wires go off to something, off to something. We don't know what it's going off to. It could be going off to a, you know, it could be going off to your webcam on your computer, it could be going off to the RAM in your computer, it could be going off to the computer fan, where, who knows where they're going. So they're going off somewhere. So how do you go from 12 volts down to 8 volts? What's the process? Well, let's grab a look at these two resistors. If I wanted to look at the total resistance, we can let's assume this is a series circuit. I know that it looks like a parallel circuit, but for the moment, let's pretend that it's a series circuit. The total resistance is going to be RA plus RB, which is going to be 2000 plus 4000, which is 6000 ohms. Oh, she's always stuck with that. Or 6 kilo ohms. Remember K being 1000. That means that, okay, the total current, we've already done this stuff before is the total voltage divided by the total resistance, which is 12 volts divided by 6,000 ohms. 12 divided by 6,000 is going to be 0. Uh, let me just check to make sure I get the right units here. It's going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 3 amps, or 2 milliamps. Now, why this is useful is I can now take this information and say, well, let's grab a look at VA is going to be IA times RA, which is going to be, whoop, we're going to assume that it's, oh, sorry. Wow, what's going on here? They've amplified it. There we go, that's better. Ugh, that was made me sick. Which is going to be um, 2 milliamps times 6 times RA is 2000. So that's going to be 4 volts. So 4 volts gets dropped over here, and 8 volts gets dropped over here. Does that make sense to everyone so far? Am I, if I lost anyone, is anyone like, whoa, what's going on? Okay, I'm going to assume because no one is freaking out and quickly typing in chat what the hell is going on, that you guys are okay with this working out. Now, if 8 volts gets dropped over here, because these lines are a, make a parallel circuit, that means that eight volts must get dropped at the top. And if those eight volts happen to go to some other device, then it's okay. Now I get the idea here. Some of you guys might be saying, so you're mixing parallel and series circuits. And I would normally, again, I would say, yes, I am. I'm breaking the rules. I'm not, I'm treating this like a series circuit when I know that it's a parallel circuit. And yeah. So it's probably not going to be four kilo ohms, but you can sort of justify it if the resistance at this end is much lower. You can sort of, yeah, it's sort of just a way. 
And obviously, the, when the people that make this circuit are going to do a lot of extra maths here. But the idea is we can just generally figure out what the voltage is going to be. We're just going to use this as a basic voltage divider. Let's do another circuit here. Whoa. Okay. Um, okay. So let's try this circuit here. One second. Um, sorry. So in this circuit here, what we've got is, um, let's calculate the voltage out. Let's do the same thing we just did on that previous circuit. Step one, let's calculate the total resistance. Can someone tell me in chat, what's the total resistance going to be? Or they can say out loud if you want, I don't mind. 1.5 kilo ohms. One, what did you say, 1.5? Yep. No, it's not 1.5 kilo ohms. It is 4.2 kilo ohms. So we're adding three kilo ohms plus plus one point two. Three plus one point two equals four point two. So we've got four point two kilo ohms going through this thing. Let's calculate the current. I equals V on R. Can someone tell me what the current's going to be? Guys aren't as quick to do that one because you can't do it in your head. Work it out. What is the current? Um, rounding up 2.86 amps. Yep. Oh, close. Not quite. But yeah, pretty much. It's 2.86 milliamps. Because if you look on your calculator, I bet you will see that you have a times 10 to the negative 3, which means it's 2.86 milliamps or times 10 to the negative 3. What that looks like, by the way, um, what that looks like, by the way, is if I just quickly. Um, yeah, if you go have a look, see at the end, oh, so how you got this times 10 to the negative 3 business, that means that it's a milliamp, or it's a time, it's 0 0.001 times whatever it is. So that's how I'm easily able to go from amps to milliamps. But um, yeah, like, you guys should be able to do that, hopefully, if you've seen how these work already. Uh, what's going on here? I've just lost my Zoom meeting. What's going on? Okay, here we go. I'm back. Whew, that was stressful. Um, here we go. Back to here, and we're back. So now we know it's 2.86 milliamps. You can use this to calculate the voltage over the 1.2 ohm resistor. Let's do that together. Okay, 2.86 milliamps times 10 to the negative 3 multiplied by 1.2 uh, times 10 to the power of 3 because it's 1.2 or 1 um, because that's how you write kilo times 1200 ohms is 3.4 volts so what is v out v out is 3.4 volts and that's all we need to do to calculate the V out for a particular circuit. Um, we're going to do um, we're going to do one more. But we're going to do this one. We're going to do it a bit differently. And then I'm going to show you something new about this. So this one's a bit of a different scenario. In this one, what I've done, um, actually, hold on. Uh, yeah, I'll keep, I'm going to, yeah. 
uh, the the values are the same, which is kind of you know what? No, I'm going to change the values. Give me a second. Let's whoa. Let's change this to what? Let's say make it two point five. There we go. Look at that. Done. Just a little bit of a change. Okay, so all right, um, yes, that's how voltage dividers work. Reese, you nailed, got the, hit the nail on the head. This one's a bit different because instead of this question of calculating the voltage out, we want to calculate the voltage in. What is the voltage in? So this one's um, like I to pretty much say how to to do it. If V out is 2 volts, then 2 volts is dropped over the 1.2 kilo ohm resistor. That's true. That means that this must be 2 volts. And, if, and I can actually just pretty much use these same steps, but go backwards. Instead, now that I know that this is 2 volts, let's use that to find the current. Okay. Current equals the current through B is going to be the voltage through B divided by the resistance of B, which happens to be um, 2 volts divided by 1,200 ohms. 2 divided by 1,200 is going to be 1.67 times 6 per meter 3 million. Now that I know the current, right, if I multiply that by the total resistance, so the V total will be the total resistance, total current times the total resistance. And if I know the total current is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 3, what's the, I, what is the total resistance going to be? Who can tell me? Total resistance is what? Do I have to pick someone? All right, fine. Let's see. Can I get either Adina or Aaron to tell me, someone with a A at the start of their name, to tell me what is the total resistance? Someone, we one of them did. Aaron, thank you. 4.1 kilo ohms or 4,100 ohms. So if I multiply this guy by 4,100, I get 6.8 volts. Now, obviously, it's not a round number because it changed that number in the last second. But yeah, we use the same techniques to work that out. So the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is notice how this process, step one, calculate the total resistance, step two, calculate the current, step three, use that to find the V out. We've repeated this process now twice. We've done it once at the start. We did it once again here. I was going to get you to do it a third time, but nah, life's too short. And then we did it a third time here. So we keep using the same process. So it would make sense if we had some kind of formula. And it turns out there is a formula. This is usually the part, this is going to be very different to teach this. This is usually part where all the students groan and they complain. They go, so are you telling me there was a formula the whole time and you made us do the hard work? And I'm like, yes. 
But the importance of the hard work is to understand where it comes from. I'm sure you're still groaning even though you're muted anyway. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So here we've got V out is, here we've got V out. Now V out is equal to the, here is the total voltage, right? The R1 plus R2, total resistance. So this is RT. You don't even need to fully understand how this equation works. RT. And here is R2. And then R2, if you, if you take V in divided by RT, that's going to give you IT. So this section here makes IT. And R2 divided by the total current is going to give you the total voltage because V equals IR. Now, if you don't understand how the heck this formula is a shorthand for V equals IR, that's okay. This formula will work no matter what. If there are more resistors, we just add them to the end of the denominator. So if there's like R3, R4, then you just go R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4. R2 is the resistor that we care about, the resistor that we're measuring V out over. So once you guys to write this circuit, this equation down because we're about to use it for the very first time. I'm going to assume, actually I'll give you like 10 more seconds to write it down. If you haven't written it down somewhere because we're about to use it. Alright, I'm going to assume you've written it down. Let's grab a look at an example. Let's do this. Oh, you know, no, no, no. we're not going to do a hard one to start off with. We're going to do an easy one to start off with. So, V out equals R2 over R1 plus R2 times V in R2. That's 4 kilo ohms. So we've got 4,000 on top of R1, which is 5,000 plus 4,000 times V in, which is 24. Can I get someone to do all of this in their calculator? You can open a separate tab. You can do it on your phone. I don't care. Can I get you to do this? Big calculation. See if you can tell me what V out is in one step rather than going through three little steps. Someone has done it. I expect it should be okay. What the heck is that, Jason? Times 24. Okay, yep, yeah, sure. But can you actually do that? Like, can you go 0.44 times 24? Also, that's not what I got. But, oh no, it's, no, it is. Sorry, I see tiles. Come on, guys! I want someone to actually calculate this. What does this equal? Uh, ten point six seven. Ten point six seven. That's what I got. 10.67 volts. That is our V out. And we got that by just, thank you for that. We got that by just doing that in one equation. There wasn't any mucking around here. It was just one quick and easy equation. Now, could we do that for other measurements, like how we did this question here? We calculated the, uh, this question here, we calculated V in. Could you do that for something like, this here, could you calculate the VN? The answer is yes. VN, V out equals R2 over R1 plus R2 times V out. That means that if I go, whoops, times VN. That means if I take V out 
and I divide it by R2 over R1 plus R2, then that will give me the N. How I got from this line at the top to the line at the bottom is by dividing both sides by. Now, if you're not comfortable transposing this all in one go, you can transpose it in parts. But honestly, transposing everything in one go is a lot easier. Remember, all we're doing is just cancelling it out from this side by dividing it by R2. If you wanted to divide both sides by R2, but then multiply both sides by R1 plus R2, that's another way you could do it. Now, uh, as mathematicians, we should expand this and deal with it properly. As lazy engineers, we don't have to do that. We can just say V out is two volts divided by open brackets R2, which is 2.2200 divided by 5400 plus 2200. All right, I want you guys to do this on your calculators. Um, get a calculator. If you don't have a calculator, get a new tab open in Chrome or Excel or whatever and put it in there. I want to see more than just one person get the answer to it this time. Um, I want to see a couple of people do it. 6.9, okay, is what one answer. We've got one answer. Let's see if we can get someone else. I'm going to do it myself. Be careful because remember, at the bottom, that denominator needs to be in brackets or you need to solve it by hand first. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. Okay, I've got someone else other than Reese. Reese, I think you, ah, I've got two. Kevin, I got one, one more. Give me one more. Someone else. Who's got the answer? Have you got the same answer as these two gentlemen? Aaron's giving me a third answer. 6.91 volts is the correct answer. At least that's what I got. Um, v in equals 6.9 volts. So it's just by rearranging it. If you wanted to figure out what R1 was, it's going to be a bit of a pain. It's actually, to be honest with you, Figuring out what R1 is, is, is probably easier just to use the actual circuit method that I showed you at the beginning. But you could re always rearrange this formula V out times R1 times R2, subtract R2 to R2. So yeah, you could still work out what R1 is using this formula, but it's going to be a bit of a pain. This formula is really good for working out V out and V in. So that's what a voltage divider is. Um, you can actually compress a voltage divider into a small unit factor. We would call that a variable resistor. Now, a variable resistor is sometimes known as a potentiometer. And it's what it is, is a voltage divider, but plugged into a small device. It has this symbol. And what it does, uh, actually, I'll finish reading it out first. It can be used so that a person can it can be used so that a person can change the resistance of a circuit and control something like sound or light levels. It's an analog input device. So imagine if you could change the resistance of a circuit without having to, you know, buy a new resistor. That's what a, a variable resistor does. And how it works, just so that you know, is imagine you've got a long, imagine you've got a long piece of wire, okay? Now, if I hook up a, let's just say now that this long wire, and then I'm going to put a mic lobe at the end. And then at this end, I'm going to put a battery. Uh, 
actually I'm not going to put a like word there. I'm going to then do this. I'm going to put a like word here. Now, how does this, how does a variable resistor work? Well, this long wire is going to have some resistance in it. Okay. If you measure the wire, let's say you measure the wire from here to here, that's going to be like this big long part. Let's call that 10 ohms. But if I only measure the wire from here to here, that's five ohms. And if I only measure the voltage from, let's say, uh, we'll do one more here to here, well, that's going to be only one ohm. You're like, okay. So if I use this as a voltage divider, right? If I plug my light bulb into the circuit here, then that means it's already gone through 10 ohms, only this will be very, very dim. Only a small bit of electricity will go get dropped over there. Whereas if I attach this light bulb to maybe halfway, then sure, it's gone through five ohms, but it hasn't lost as much energy going through only this section as opposed to going through the whole thing. So this is now going to be, you know, this is going to now light up. But I could instead plug this in all the way at this end here, in which case it's only been through one ohm. Because it's only been through one ohm, it's got a lot of voltage left over because it only drops, you know, whatever the voltage is, it's only dropped over there. We're talking about one amp, right? We drop 10 volts going this one, five volts going through this one, one volt going through this one. So you still got nine volts or whatever. So this is going to be super bright. And that means we can change the intensity of the light by using this variable resistor. And that's actually what they do is they pick different parts on the coil. And that's why the, what this picture means. You can see with this picture, if the if the if the arrow was all the way at this end, you would have very, very little um, there would be low uh, voltage drop you'd be able to get a high amount of voltage. Whereas over here, you would lose a lot of your voltage to the battery, to the resistor. So that's what a potentiometer does. And that's also why it's got three steps. One of these steps goes to the positive end of the battery. One of these steps goes to the negative end of the battery. And one of these steps in the middle is able to choose the voltage. If you go, and it will either be a very, very high voltage or a high resistance or a very, very low resistance. Now, you don't have to understand this exactly. I just want you guys to get the general idea. And the general idea is, of course, that it's a, it's a volt, potential meter is like a voltage divider crammed into really, really small. Let's talk a little bit now about, um, okay, now that we know what a potentiometer is, we know what a voltage divider circuit is. Let's crank up the and make it a little, this a little bit more advanced. For one last little bit, let's talk about this here is a voltage divider circuit. Ignore this. This is not a Wi Fi symbol. This just means, uh, this is just a symbol that means ground. What it does is it means that this is just another place. It's like another terminal of the battery. But we, and it helps just in case there's a short circuit, it helps us not blow up everything in the circuit. So we've got this um, voltage divider circuit. LDR stands for light dependent resistor. We actually talked about these very briefly when I talked about non-ohmic devices. And it changes its resistors. In the dark, it has a very low, uh, it has a, it has a high resistance. 
and the light has a very low resistance, so it changes its resistance. So let's say we've got a, let's say we've got a, um, let's look at this, right? Let's say we've got a dark room. If we have, actually I'll do this in purple, so it's like you know, if we have a dark room, then this value here will be very, this will have a very high resistance. High resistance means that this will be have a high a high V voltage drop which means this coming out will be very, very low. So that means you're not going to get much electricity out. Okay, so what? Let's now look at the opposite alternative. Let's say now that we've got a very bright room. If we have a very bright room, we might then have a, we would have a very, low resistance here and if we've got very low resistance we're going to have low voltage drop which means that our voltage v out is now going to be high so now we can actually change what this does now v out this might be connected to let's say this is connected to um you know what I like the idea of? Let's get connected to some electronic, let's connect it to some electric blinds. So when the sun comes out, you know, when the sun comes out and starts shining on the house, what it does is that the voltage drop goes down. So therefore more voltage can get to the motors, which then open up the blinds so that more light can get into our little house and we can, you know, celebrate the day a bit easier. So that's how you can actually use a voltage divider circuit to your advantage. Now, I don't want you to copy down the circuit. You already have, good for you. All I really want you to do is just copy down this here. A light dependent resistor has high resistance in dark and low resistance in light. I'm actually not going to get you to solve any problems with resistors. That's again another year 11, like with light dependent resistance circuits. Again, that's another year 11. Um, that's another year 11 physics question. But this is the basics of it. Like if you can understand this, then you can do pretty, you can pretty much do the question. But I do want to finish it like, is this picture here. This sort of shows the, another way of thinking about it. Um, remember, so light shining, remember when light shines on it, has low resistance. Low resistance? Low resistance means low voltage drop, which means that a lot of light, a lot of voltage can get dropped over the light pole. In this circuit though, it doesn't work anymore. It's still got low resistance, but because it's got low resistance, it actually is like a short circuit. And our light bulb stays off. But when I turn my light bulb off, now this has high resistance because it's in the dark. And so our light globe becomes the path of least resistance. And so it lights up. This would be great for like a night light. You know, if you had, um, or uh, if you had something where it's like, oh, there is a little bit of, you know, I want to make sure that when the, we switch the lights off in the house, that this little light comes on so we don't fall down the stairs. And so that's what this could be used for. This one on the far left is very, is a lot more similar to our blind scenario. Oh, lights falling on the resist, on the LDR. That means we're going to make the blind go because it hasn't got as much resist voltage drop. So, yeah, it's just another way that you guys can see that we can hook these up into circuits. The last part that I wanted to talk to you about is this part here. And I actually didn't finish this slide off because I forgot about it and I was eating lunch. So I'm going to finish it off now with you today. 
and let's and we'll talk about it and write it down and then that's going to be pretty much it for the lesson so let's talk about this so we are actually starting to get an idea of something here um i've talked briefly about this but i want to really explore this idea in this slide an input is when a device puts information into a circuit in the form of a voltage Okay, so let's think about this. We've just been talking about the LDR. Now an LDR puts information into a circuit. It puts information in the form of, the information it records is the light levels. If there is a bright light, then the voltage drop will be different. And so you can use that information you can use that information in a circuit you can be like i'm going to make my circuit so that if the light levels are high then i want there to be a high voltage at this point i want this device to do some kind of job you can have the same job happen with a thermistor thermistors measure temperature you can actually think about other input devices. Like I actually think another input device, and we talked about one as well. We also talked about potentiometers, which is going to, but that records a, that's a human device. So that's a human, that's a human setting. And you can think about a potentiometer as you can either set it as high or low. So I'm actually going to write the word analog here. What analog means is that you can actually set it between zero and like 10. You can pick a number somewhere between those two things. So a potentiometer is good for if you wanted to change how bright something is. You think about every single volume control button dial that you can use to switch between being very, very high volume or low volume, light levels, you can use, yeah, it can be used for a lot of things. There's one more input output device that I haven't written here. It's actually one of the simplest devices that we ever learned. The switch. The switch, which only has two, is again human setting, it can only be controlled by human, can either be on or off. You could have, um, yeah, you could like an interstitial, yeah, so you can either be on or off. So you can change this in different sort of um, things. Someone just said, um, like a Nintendo, and it's like, yeah, that's exactly. And Nintendo has uh, analog you can use, and you, that has special. It it doesn't just say we're on and off. On and off is the opposite of analog. On and off is actually something called digital. So a digital information, your binary, sometimes it's also known as binary information is either on or off it's either yes or no so most switches in your houses are binary they're either on or off sometimes and yeah when i said the volume thing i was really talking about yeah but nowadays you guys know the volume is actually more more about digital it's either level 10 level 12 level 13 you can't twist the dial so it's between 12 and 13 but that's what the difference between analog and digital is one more that I thought about would be a microphone. Microphone is another input device. So the last bit here is to talk about the opposite of these. An output is when a device um, uses voltage to interact with the world. Now, 
there, I mean, I probably could have written that for them in a lot of different ways, but that'll do. That's just the basic here. So let's think of some, let's think of some output devices. Actually, you know what? I'm going to throw this open to the board. Now that I've written down some input devices, can someone give me an example of what they think? They can be wrong here. They think an output device could be. Speaker is correct. Reese, you on the call now here. I'm not sure when you said that, but yeah, a speaker is a way that we can send out voltage. If you apply voltage to a speaker, it makes it as um, sound. What's another output device? What's another way we can take a circuit and instead of just looking at it as wires, we can send information out into the world or send, interact with the world? Any idea? Come on, guys. Someone who hasn't spoken in a while, give it a try. Maybe who hasn't said anything? You can just write in chat if you're not confident. What about MRAY? What do you think is a good output device? Or Jess, what do you think is a good output device? What, could, what is a good way that you can take a voltage in a circuit and turn it into something? Maybe Julia, what's a good output device? TV screen, monitor, perfect, Aaron, that's great. That's a way to get line. Printer, radio, yeah. These are all devices that have lots of things. Um, monitor, and monitor, can you guys tell me what is a, like, let's keep, let's dial this back a second. What is a monitor made out of? And it's very, very smallest level, light. That's what I wanted. A light bulb is a a light bulb is a is a device that is a tiny tiny light, and what it does is it releases light information. Now, if you put a lot of them together, you can make a TV or a monitor screen. Some of you guys have said radio. Dina, you said radio. Yeah, sure. Radio is again using. Um, taking specific inputs and using it to make sound by a speaker. Um, I'm looking for one that no one's sort of said yet. Oh, printer's close. A printer has more, what does a printer have in it that makes it able to do things? What's the main things that you can hear when a printer's moving? Does anyone know what it is? A motor? Motor, that's the one I wanted. A motor is another form of device. A motor, a motor is a form of um, motion. And it's an output. So you might have a, um, you might have a device that can send out motion in, instead. You may have a heating coil that can change the temperature um and there are lots of different ways here but i guess the last part here is this when we talk about robotics and when we talk about when we talk about robotics when we talk about integrated circuits what we're talking about is we're talking about a way that we can take these inputs and use them to control these outputs. And to do that, you need to have some kind of brain. You need to have some kind of brain. And in robotics, you would refer to that as a you would refer to that as a microcontroller. And a microcontroller, and these are also part of integrated circuits. are all about taking inputs and changing them into outputs. Maybe you set a microphone which can detect sound and you use that to attach to a, you attach the microphone to a light bulb. And so then that way, if there is someone trying to break into your house, then it sends off a, a light goes off and so therefore the intruder can be seen. Maybe you attach 
a potentiometer, maybe you attach a potentiometer to a speaker so you have a volume control. Maybe you attach a thermistor to a heater so that you can, you know, when something gets really, really cold, you can turn a heater on and it will change the temperature of it. Maybe you've got a um, light dependent resistor that controls a motor because you've got a, a device that you want when it gets too dark, you want to put the blinds down, stuff like that. All of these have inputs and outputs. When we talk, when we go to make, make our robots, we go to use circuits, we're going to be looking at how you can take an input and how you can use that to get an output. But then also, we're going to be looking at how you can, because the real intelligence of a robot, the real intelligence is not necessarily how they deal with inputs, but maybe how they deal with multiple inputs. If you see that if your temperature goes up and you see a lot of light, then that probably means that you're in the middle of, that it's daytime. But if you see your temperature go up, but you know, maybe the light goes up, but the temperature doesn't, then maybe someone just put a light on. Maybe it's not necessarily a, the sun that necessarily hasn't necessarily come up. So these are some complex things that we can actually do. And of course, there are lots more complicated things here. There are radio wave detectors. That's how we get to GPS. And there are comp more complicated inputs and there are more complicated outputs. And you can attach motors to different things to get different outputs. But yeah, ultimately, that's just where I wanted to end.